Atlanta, Georgia, headquarters of Michael Barnsley's Iterated Systems. In 1991, Barnsley received a two and a half million dollar government grant to develop fractal image compression systems. Corporations such as Microsoft, Mitsubishi, Multicom and Virgin now use Barnsley's image and data compression software. One of the most exciting moments occurred when I discovered the collage theorem. We'd been trying to work out how you could control a certain class of dynamical systems to make pictures of leaves. Then, struggling with the question, it just dawned on me that it was very simple. You needed to form a collage, a covering of the object, with copies of itself, smaller, shrunken copies, so that the whole object was tiled with copies of itself. It's a self-reference statement. It's as though you took a, instead you might take a triangle and cover it with little triangles. You might take a square and cover it with little squares. Well, the theorem said, if you took a fern and covered it with little ferns, then you would have created a dynamical system or a formula for a fern. But if you tried to actually create a picture using the collage theorem, it took uh, hundreds of hours of graduate student time working on the problem. And the, the, the holy grail at this point for us became the question of, could we find a way to tell a computer, just look at a picture, a digital picture, and automatically go ahead and find the fractal formula for it. The discovery of how to automatically calculate the collage for an arbitrary picture came to me in a dream. From the early days of doing mathematics, I used to have a recurrent nightmare, which was something to do with studying matrices. And they kind of remind one of perhaps an old-fashioned telephone switchboard well, in the dream, what happened was there was thousands of holes and lots of wires connecting everywhere to everywhere. And it was always a sort of tense muddle between the switchboard with all the wires going everywhere, always in a horrible tangle. And somehow it represented a matrix. I'd had this nightmare many, many times over 20 years. Night of the anniversary of my father's death, two years after, suddenly I saw in the dream how you could straighten out the switchboard, how all the wires would become untangled and nicely connected, and how you would join all the wires from big blocks to little blocks in the grid. And I, I woke up in the morning, I knew I'd discovered it. That this was it. This was the total secret to fractal image compression. How to automatically look at a digital picture, these ones made of the low-resolution input, like your eye receives, and how to turn it into A, a formula, and B, an entity of infinite resolution. So the goal is now to be able to capture this fire of Prometheus, if you like, this fractal wonder, put it in a box, and being able to make this available to everyone. Now, if we take this very coarse image and pass it through Barsley's fractal analyzer, we could actually reconstruct the details of the original image. If we then put the two images side by side, the difference is startling. So, where has all this detail come from? Well, this fractal image is a prediction based on the digital data sampled at the original low resolution. What happens is the original data is modeled by a fractal formula, and then we're looking at that fractal a greater and greater detail. Fractal geometry also has surprising applications in medicine. This is the blood circulatory system of the human body. And yet, you'll recognize it, it is a kind of fractal. Now we can understand what is really happening when our blood circulates. Here is the most important fractal of all in the human body. A small portion of the incredibly complex wiring circuit of the brain. We may never understand how our brains work, but if we do, I suspect they'll depend on some application of fractal geometry. Why do these strange patterns have such an appeal? Well, obviously they trigger some kind of resonance in the mind. And incidentally, there's an odd coincidence here, the name Mandelbrot and the word Mandela 
or a religious symbol. I charge a pure coincidence, but indeed the Mandelbrot set does seem to contain an enormous number of mandalas or symbols. The Paisley pattern is one, and I'm sure there are many others. And in ecclesiastical design, such as stained glass windows, particularly in Islamic art, you find many echoes of the Mandelbrot set centuries before it was discovered. I had an experience which many people uh, repeated uh, and told me about. I had experience immediately that when I first, first saw them, I was the first person to see them. It was absolutely no way anybody could have seen before. Yet, after a few days or sometimes a few hours, a few minutes, it became almost familiar. I was finding features in it which I've seen somewhere. So where have I seen them? Well, first of all, certainly, as I said, in natural phenomena, but also perhaps in art. So I wonder why is it so? Uh, we know the brain has some cells which uh, handle its shapes, boundaries, and other sh cells which handle uh, the colors. Does the brain have also cells which handle fractal complication? Well, we don't know. It's a purely, purely hypothetical uh, question. It's a tempting question, but we don't know anything about it. Here's another strange resonance. This series of paintings was made in 1928 by a patient of Carl Gustav Jung the co-founder of modern psychology. Jung would have been surprised and delighted to know that the computer revolution, whose beginning he just lived to see, would give new impetus to his theory of the collective unconscious. The idea that there is a well of consciousness compounded of primordial universal images that we all share, the substructure or background of awareness the mind clearly finds resonances in the M set. But there are other wider implications too. This mathematics offers new insights into the way the universe works, how much in life is determined, and how much is due to chance. When Isaac Newton came up with laws of motion and laws of gravity, the picture that emerged was of a clockwork universe. It was of a a machine that ticked on a predetermined course. And we needed to know was where it was now, and what it was doing now, and then you could predict the future forever. And there are two challenges to this. One is quantum mechanics, which says, in fact, there is irreducible chance built into the very fabric of the universe. And you can't actually say exactly what it's doing now. You can't say exactly what it's doing ever. But the other is things that come out of the Mandelbrot set and related parts of mathematics, which is even in the Newtonian world, in practice, you may not be able to predict the future. It can be deterministic in principle, but not in practice. This is how God created a system which gave us free will. It's the most brilliant maneuver in the universe to create something in which everything is free. How could you do that? Albert Einstein refused to accept the idea of a dice-playing deity. He, he wrote a letter to Max Born in which he said, you believe in a god who plays dice and I in complete law and order. So he obviously felt that chance and deterministic laws were not compatible and he preferred the deterministic laws. Now what the Mandelbrot set and chaos and related things have done for us is to show that you can have both at the same time. So it's, it's not whether God plays dice that matters, it's how God plays dice. I can tell you, exploring this set, I certainly never had the feeling of invention. I had never the feeling that my imagination was rich enough to invent all these extraordinary things. I was discovering them. They were there, even though nobody had seen them before. It's marvelous, a very simple formula explains all these very complicated things. So the goal of science is starting with mess to explain by a simple formula. It's a kind of dream of science. And in this case, the dream is implemented in a fantastic fashion. Often when I'm looking at my computer screen and watching the beautiful images unfolding, I'm reminded of Keats's famous lines, charmed magic casements opening on the foam of perilous seas in fairy lands forlorn. 
The Mandelbrot set is indeed one of the most astonishing discoveries in the entire history of mathematics. Who could have dreamed that such an incredibly simple equation could have generated images of literally infinite complexity? We've all read stories about maps that revealed the location of some hidden treasure. Well, in this case, the map is the treasure.